Look at it. That's a real Muslim. It is hate. This is lies. Shut up. Lies from Satan. You're going straight to hell, Muslim. So we'll get raped. Are you kidding me? You deserve it. It will send you to hell. You will burn. It is hate. Sister, sister, don't even, don't even get an argument. Are you kidding me? Now, was he just trying to eat the Quran? Now, I've seen some crazy things, but now, you know, when, when, when somebody's really doing some foolish stuff like that, how do we respond? Is this guy just really hungry for Islam, or he's trying to provoke you? And we have all sorts of extremists out there, so how do we, now, when somebody is really trying to push you to the limits, how should we, as peaceful human beings, because that's what this way of life calls us to, to have peace with our Creator, peace with ourselves, and peace with society. But obviously, this extremist, he don't want peace. He wants trouble. So we're going to be giving you some tips and some advice on how to handle yourself in these situations. We'll be right back. This is the This is the Peace be with you. Welcome to the Deen Show. Assalamu alaikum. How are you, brother? Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. All good, brother. Alhamdulillah. All the way from Ozzy, from Australia. Australia. Yes, beautiful. How's everybody back there? Very good. Over there, do they got people trying to eat the Quran? Uh, not yet. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> we got some crazy stuff going on in yeah, America. It happens. Yes. It happens. Yeah. Uh, you obviously got to see the video. It, it was very disturbing yes. to see something like that. Definitely. What, what are your first thoughts? Point number one, uh, it just uh, reflects a very bad impression of a society where we are. It just in, you know, shows to us there are extremists on all corners of the world. Uh, it's a very ugly face uh, for any society, any community, any country. I don't want you to get a bad impression because yeah. we got some very good Christians out there. Sure. You know, um, very sympathetic yeah. uh, to a lot of the injustices that are going towards yep. the Muslims. You know, Muslims are, if you see, obviously the most persecuted, the yeah. you know, the most misunderstood Islam. Yes. But you have a lot of good Christians. But then you got some of these extreme elements out there. Yep. So I don't want you to, you know, um, pick, have, that. Yeah. pick sure, that well, up from us on your trip here. True. Just a few confessions. You know, Australians in general don't like Aust Americans a lot. <laughs> Maybe just because of the accent, uh -huh. uh, but uh, it, it, things like this doesn't really add up. Yeah. Um, things like this really reflects a very bad um, you know, face of any society. Uh, you might be seeing similar uh, pictures coming from Australia sometimes. And just imagine what you're looking from outside it just throws in, in a very bad image. So here at the Dean Show, we want to keep things sure. fair and balanced. Definitely. We want to address some things yep. that you saw in the video. Yeah. And one of the things now is the respect that we have for other people's religions yes. and their books. Can yep. you talk about this? Sure. Point number one, brother, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran directly, uh, especially in uh, Surah uh, An'am, Surah number six, ayah number 108, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, revile not the gods whom they believe in. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it absolutely clear in Islam that as a Muslim, you cannot, you should not abuse other gods, even though Islam is the monotheistic religion and you believe any other god, Who's, who's associated with the, with the one true God is, is, is a major sin in, in the religion. But Almighty God Allah says, don't abuse other gods. In, t in uh, extension of that, don't abuse other religions. In extension of that, don't abuse other people. So this is very, very clear in Islam. So as a Muslim, I would respect all other faiths. And especially Judaism and Christianity are the religions of, of the religion uh, of the books from God. As a Muslim, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaches us in the Quran, Ya Ahl al-Kitab, say to them as a people of the book with respect. So we respect those people out there uh, from other faiths. Now it doesn't seem like these extremists here, like yep. they have much respect. Sure. Um, well, as in any society, you will always have people on both ends. You will have people who are good. You will have some people who are bad. Just reflecting back with Australia, a few years back, I don't know if you heard, uh, some international Indian students were brutally abused and, and even killed uh, by some bad Australians. Um, is that all Australia? Definitely not. But you'll have extremist elements in every society. And this is one of the extremist elements from maybe the Christian society. Now, how yeah. does this go? We know that one came to Jesus, peace be upon him, who yeah. we love and revere as one yeah. of the mightiest messengers of yeah. God. No Muslim is a Muslim, obviously, unless he believes and loves Jesus. Yes. Now, 
one came to him, and you can probably uh, expound on this, and yeah. asked him, oh, good master, what good thing can I do to have eternal life? Jesus sure. said, why are you calling me good? There's only one good but God. Definitely. And if one wants to enter into paradise, eternal life, you've got to keep the commandments. The one I want to focus on is loving your neighbor. Very true. Is this loving yes. your neighbor? <laughs> it's, it's really, con uh, you know, very uh, confronting. Uh, the verse that you, that you just quoted from the Bible is the passage mentioned in the Gospel of Matthew, uh, chapter 19, verses 16 and 17. Uh, and it's, it's an amazing story and it's an amazing teaching uh, where a person comes to Jesus, as you mentioned, he says, good master, what good thing shall I do to enter eternal life? And all he says is keep the commandments. And we know the first 10 most important commandments and one of that is love your neighbor. Uh, how could you be so confronting, so abusive uh, towards a fellow being, towards a fellow countryman, towards a person from, uh, from your own society? Uh, so this is not really reflecting uh, any religion. You know, I say to people like this, you are actually damaging your own cause. You're damaging your own faith. You're damaging your own religion and community by doing that. Yeah. Because if you really want to, you know, win the hearts of people, True. you want them to come over. You want because yes. he's another thing they were saying is like you're going to hell. You're damned to hell. Yes. I mean, Jesus and all the prophets came to save people from going to hell. True. That's right. Exactly. Yes. You know, this this approach sometimes this is you know, uh, human community has has these different approaches within their uh, you know uh, attitude. Um, we should have empathy towards each other. And that's what Jesus and Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon, both of them taught to the people to have empathy. For example, Abu Jahl. Uh, if you ask any Muslim who is Abu Jahl, the Prophet would say, uh, the people would say he was the worst enemy of Prophet Muhammad. Okay? He's abusing him, blaspheming him, making plans to kill him, murder him. But you know what Prophet Muhammad does? He wakes up in the middle of the night, that is the time of Tahajjud, stands up in front of Allah, makes dua, Ya Allah, Oh my God, give guidance to Abu Jahl. Amazing. And you know what is guidance? It's like you're praying to God, let him walk with me in paradise. The one who's abusing you, blaspheming you, killing you, you're making pr prayer to God, let him walk with me. That's the attitude. You've got to have empathy. You want to save people, not throw them into the hellfire. We're not the judges here. And that's what Jesus said. You're not the judge. You remember the story when uh, the people were pelting stone to, uh, to a woman. And Jesus said to them, throw a stone if you are sinless and everyone had to walk away. That's all, we all are sinners. So you shouldn't really be judging each other. And that approach was very, very bad from that person. When we come back from the break, sure. I wanna ask you again, back on the hell thing, condemning people to hell, because yes. the Bible's clear on some things. The yes. Bible's clear on uh, forbidding alcohol, yes. is this right? On yep. forbidding pork, yep. uh, on forbidding um, sodomy, True. and many other things. Yes. But where can exactly. someone get the evidence sure. um, to go ahead and condemn the Muslims to the hellfire. Yes. I want explicit statements. Is there anything saying if such and sure. such, uh, um, you in don't believe in Jesus, that he's God, son of God, he True. died for your sins, we'll that you're back. going to hell. Can you answer this? Definitely. Many yes. would consider you a, 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 some of a Christian, uh, would you say Bible scholar, Christian scholar, you've, studied, yes. you've been studying Well, the yes, uh, coming from the chain of Ahmed Didat and his studentship, um, obviously that is my expertise and that's my yeah. field of education. So, so we got the person yeah. who's well yep. versed in the Bible, an expert in it, we're going to be asking these really tough questions here in the Dean Show, so don't go anywhere. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your captain speaking. Welcome aboard flight 5235 nonstop to London Heathrow. The temperature is 25 degrees outside and we are expecting a fairly smooth flight today. In a few moments, the flight attendants will be passing around the cabin to offer you hot and cold drinks. We thank you for choosing to fly with us today and we hope you enjoy your flight. Thank God it was just a dream. God? I don't believe in God. Ladies and gentlemen, the captain has turned on the fasten seatbelt sign. Please subscribe to The Dean Show. Follow us on our official Facebook and Twitter pages in the links below. Please also help support The Dean Show by making a donation in the link below. 
back here on the Dean Show with our special guest all the way from Australia. Yes. Alhamdulillah, thank you for being with us. We're going to go right back to that clip again. Get it! Look at it. That's a real Muslim. Oh, oh, oh. It is hate! Oh. This is lies! Shut up! Lies from Satan! You're going no, 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 straight no, 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 to hell, no, 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 Muslim! No, 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 no. So we'll get raped! Are you kidding me? You deserve it! He will send you to hell! You will burn! It is hate! Sister, sister, don't even, don't even get an audience. Okay, so now people who are just tuning in didn't catch the first part. They know what we're talking about. We're talking about this young man. Uh, obviously, I don't know if uh, he's, uh, he's seemed like uh, just deranged, lunatic yeah. or something. He's yeah. really trying to provoke... You know, the students there are going to study, you know, last thing they're expecting is lunatic sure. eat, trying to eat the Quran. So before the break, we talked about our respect for other religions, our respect, and you quoted a verse from the verbatim word of God. Yeah. And now I want to ask you, you kept saying, hell, hell, you're going to hell, you're going to hell, this and that. Can you tell me, you speak a lot with yeah. different um, Christians well, yeah. and whatnot, and uh, what evidence do they use to provide to say, to say that now you as a Muslim are going to hell? Sure. See, point number one, um, generally the people who believe uh, in different religions, they all have this concept that people of that faith are going to go to paradise. The people who reject that faith will not go to paradise. But let's put it into perspective. According to the Bible, the Bible does not say anywhere that Christianity is the religion of God. The word Christianity does not exist in the Bible at all. Uh, it's, it's interesting. What Christianity means, according to Oxford Dictionary, is a person who believes in Jesus Christ and his teachings and the concept that he's the son of God. Now, if you put all of this together, point number one, who believes in Jesus Christ? As a Muslim, I have, I'm obligated to believe in Jesus, peace be upon him. In fact, no Muslim is a Muslim if he or she does not believe in Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. So as a Muslim, I am technically, according to Oxford Dictionary, a Christian. So how could I go to hellfire when I believe in Christ, when I love Christ, and when I follow Christ? So a true Christian who says, if, you can't go to hell, if, you, if you're going to go to hellfire, it has to be you reject Christ. But someone who believes in Christ, he's the last person to enter hellfire in, in that sense. So Muslims should not be said that we will go to the hellfire. Now many of the guys, they, they have in the banners and the shirts, uh, John 3.16, yes. yep. for God so loved the world that he yes. sent his only begotten son who yes. believes in him and whatnot. Yes. Yeah. So can we say now, if you dissect this verse, okay, yep. uh, can you go into it? Because hasn't sure. this, this word begotten, hasn't by the highest eminence of scholars been thrown out? Very right. So if you look at the Bible, the Bible has had its revisions. Um, one of the earliest English language or English version of the Bible was um, you know, the King James Version. Uh, published in 1611, Christian era. That has this word, this verse, Gospel of John chapter 3, verse 16, which says, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Now this title, begotten, has been removed, overthrown, put out from the Bible in the New International Version and, and the Revised Version of the Bible. So what happens here is the Christian scholars understood that this word does not exist in the original text. Now once you remove that, what happens here is Jesus is son of God. According to the Bible, in various places, Adam is son of God, David is son of God, you know, um, other prophets are sons of God. It, it specifically says in one place in the book of Romans chapter 8, verse 16, it says, for anyone who follows God is son of God. If you bring it back to the Arabic terminology, that means Abid, the one who believes in God, obeys God and follows God. So in, in context in the Bible, everyone is a son of God who believes and works for God. It's like, you know, when I come to America, some of the elderly people, they saw me, they say, oh, my son. Um, I, I thought it's an American thing. You know, my son does not mean I'm actually his son, literally. But what it means is it's, it's a term of respect for the society. The Americans respect young people, so they say, my son. Similarly, God is saying to everyone in the Bible, you're my son, because God cares for you. That's the language. But the moment someone says this is literal, then God's got sons and tons in the Bible. Everyone's a son. Yeah, yeah. So now if you take it how it's supposed to be translated, yes. and the, Jew know, the Jewish know the language yes. better, the Semitic language, they didn't take it as a literal exactly. son, didn't they? And they Definitely. took it as a servant of God. Very true. Perfect. As a servant. So yes. we would fit in this that we believe in him as a servant of God. Yes. We don't reject him. Yes. So we can't go to the hellfire. Definitely. Now. Exactly. Very true. You've just uh, added it together. Perfect. <laughs> it's amazing. Yes. Go, going along, and we're going to come to the... 
the main point of dealing with this satanic provoca this provocation, provocation, obviously, is going on. Another thing that's thrown out there is he kept insulting the last and final messenger, who was a True. brother to Jesus, Moses, Abraham, yes. Muhammad, peace be upon yes. him. He kept calling him a pedophile. Yes. Now, how do we relate to that is, see, people, some people use this as a blasphemy against Islam and Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam abusing. Now, this is one of the ways Islamophobic bigots sometimes, because they don't have rational arguments to put forward, they su su subscribe to uh, abusive and hateful terminology. If someone is really sincere about his approach or her approach, you got a question about it, you deal with the scholarship. You go to the people and ask, if I've got a concern about Americans, and as I said right in the beginning, some Australians don't really like Americans, I wanted to find out why. And when I did my research, I just found it's only because of heavy American accent. And I tell you what, um, it, it, you would have the same experience with me. If coming from Australia, we would have a different accent. So it's all about diversity, not really abusing each other. Similarly, people abuse uh, Islam and Prophet Muhammad because there is a, a, a very strong lobby against it. Just quoting you one article from Times Magazine dated 16th of April 1979. It says more than 60,000 books were written against Islam and Prophet Muhammad from 1800 to 1950. A span of 150 years, 60,000 books. You do a quick calculation, more than a book a day when printing was not even a commercial business then. So it just shows that there are people who are writing so much against Islam and Muslims. Now coming to the actual question, pedophilia, the reason they claim that is they say Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, married Aisha radiallahu anha, the mother of the believers, when she was nine. Now let's take this into perspective. So what is the right age of marriage then? So people say 18. Well, I was just in Dallas, Texas. I was told the age of marriage is 14. In, um, where is that, in Texas? In Texas. Yeah. Um, you, go, you go to the Christianity, and I found from uh, Christian Encyclopedia, it says the age of Mother Mary, the mother of Son of God, Jesus, was 12. 12 years old. 12 years old. And according to some Orthodox Christians, she was 11 years old. So Mother Mary, 11 years old. Mother Aisha, 9 years old. Elder sister, younger sister, not a big deal, right? You come, I, I, in Australia, the youngest mother was 11 years old. In America, I can assure you, you go to the, the maternity hospital, you'll find 11-year-old Americans becoming women, mothers. The government supports them. So you can become a mother, but you can't marry. In Islam, we believe in discipline. We believe in being organized. We believe in legality. You won't, Muslims wouldn't really be speeding on the streets. They do here. Yeah? I'm sure they do, but I'm saying in general, Muslims shouldn't be breaking the laws. Not at all. So what no, happens no, no, here no, no, is no. they shouldn't be. So coming back to the marriage of Prophet Muhammad and Aisha radiallahu anha, point number one, no, according to community, everywhere there are different ages of marriage. In Texas, 14. In Australia, 18. And in India, 21 for the men. I, I, heard, I heard in Massachusetts, it's still on the books 12 years old. Amazing, see? And in Australia, in, in, in India, 21. I had to suffer three more years. So every different country would have different. So according to Indians, Americans are going to be pedophiles. All Americans marrying wow. under 21. According to Australians, all Americans are going to be pedophiles because they all married under 18, right? So what you need to see is look things into context. At the time of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, the law, according to Judaism, Christianity, Islam, and the non-Muslims, was you can marry at any age. According to Medical Science Journal, a man or a woman, when they reach the age of puberty, they can marry. So Islam believes in freedom of expression and freedom for every person. She is ready for marriage at nine. She's a grown-up woman. She's a mature woman. She, cho she chose to marry. Prophet Muhammad agreed to marry, and, and the, the counselor led the marriage. What, what should it bother anyone else? It's a perfect marriage, correct marriage, legal marriage. Hope so you can't, if you take it back, you cannot prosecute someone yes. from at 1,400 years ago yes. who the society didn't object, yes. the family didn't object, yes. the religious law didn't object. Yes. Nobody, not even Nobody. his enemies, brought Definitely. up any kind of Yes, and not just, 40, exactly, not just 1,400 years ago. Even right now, you got now you gave some Texas exact, now and Massachusetts and America and Australia and India. Everyone's got different laws. So just because Americans marry you at 14, the Indians can't call them pedophiles, right? We, we're going we're gonna to come back. We're going to break Beautiful. more on this uh, very, very uh, important topic here on The Dean Show. Don't go anywhere. Did you know that part of being a Muslim that we have to believe in Jesus, peace be upon him, and a Muslim is not a Muslim who does not believe in Jesus? Do you know that God have mentioned Jesus, peace be upon him, in the Quran 25 times versus he only mentioned Muhammad, peace be upon him, only five times? Do you know that the most honorable woman in Islam was Mary, the mother of Jesus, peace be upon him? Do you know that Mary was mentioned in the Bible only 18 times? And in the Quran, she was mentioned 32 times, almost 100% more. Do you know that in the Quran, God have dedicated a whole chapter for the mother of Jesus? Surah Maryam, or chapter of Mary. Also, do you know that God have dedicated a whole chapter in the Quran to talk about the Last Supper, Surah Al-Ma'idah? Do you know that the most 
number of people named Jesus worldwide were Muslims. This is Jesus, peace be upon him, in Islam. We honor him, we respect him, he is our role model. Please subscribe to The Dean Show. Follow us on our official Facebook and Twitter pages in the links below. Please also help support The Dean Show by making a donation in the link below. Back here on The Dean Show, and obviously it's clear, you have to, if you're gonna marry, you have to abide by the law of the land. That's, yes, that's so, clear. Yes. But we're giving examples now, and right now they're seeing some academics, and you have um, people who've written on this topic. You can see that, you know, even the founding fathers you know, of this country, nobody would consider them uh, pedophiles, but, you know, the ones who've laid down the law prior to 1886, you know, the age was about six, seven. Delaware is actually seven years old. You know, nobody would consider them pedophiles. True. So exactly. how do people have the audacity? You mentioned Mary's, uh, Jesus' mother Mary, peace be according to, you the know, Christian the encyclopedia. Christian, yeah. the Christian encyclopedia, she was 12 or 11, yeah. right? So we mentioned now, real important, um, you can object to what? A spiritual reason, religious yeah. reason, cultural reason, you have no leg to stand on. Exactly. And she, wasn't she engaged to be married even before the Prophet, peace yes, be upon him? Right. Her father also, the parents, nobody yes. was, was rejecting to this. Even the worst enemies of the time did not reject that. They didn't even reject They didn't even reject that. Now because, most, yeah. uh, go ahead. Because that was the norm of the society. And that is still the norm of the society in different places of the world. And as I said, sometimes when these people, they object, they fail to realize their objection is even against them. Mm -hmm. Because they're saying, my law is the better law, but your law differs in different states. For 12 to 14 to 18 to in India 21. So everyone's yeah. pedophile according to everyone else's definition. But God's way, yes. obviously, is now the woman has reached maturity as far as she yes. can give birth to a child. Yes. Okay. And then someone says, what about the maturity level? Now? Exactly. Can you compare a mature level back, a woman back then to today? Sure. Obviously. Yes. It's see, environment is different. Uh, place is different. Time is different. But even with that respect, if we put it all in, all, all in one place, take it this way. The Mexican people, they said to the, the government, they said, we want our woman to marry at 14. They said, no, no, you can't get matured women at that age. They said, no, our women at 14 are matured than yours at 18. So maturity level differs. And act, moreover, there are exceptions in humanity everywhere. What happens? Point number one, um, the, the youngest um, you know, Nobel Peace Prize winner, the youngest medical surgeon in the world is 14 years old. Who gave her grade 10? Who gave her, gave her you know, a degree for grade 12? Who gave her a, a medical degree? But she became a surgeon at the age of 14. How? She's an exception. So you will always have exceptions in the society. So Aisha radiallahu anha, at her time, if there was a Nobel Peace Prize, she would have bagged all of them, believe me. She was the most matured woman of her time. She was the most intelligent and the most uh, memorizing capacity. She was the scholar of her time at that age of nine. So she picked up that. And yes, she was engaged before that, but Islam has two stages. One is engagement, the other is actual consummation of the marriage. The consummation of the marriage will not take place unless and until the boy and the girl both reach the age of puberty. They both agree to it, the parents agree, the society agrees, the legality, the law agrees, and it's all done. Now, when you have someone who suffers this kind of abuse, which obviously the problem, Muhammad, peace be upon him, never had a girlfriend, yeah. never had relations outside of marriage. Yes. He was known as, as on the highest of moral ground. Yes. And someone who suffers from that, obviously there's trauma. They're traumatized yes. their whole life. You don't, do you have any signs of trauma in this woman? Yes, definitely. Pro she, Prophet Muhammad died after 10 years of the marriage. And she lived for a lot longer than that. And she has never complained. She said he was the best husband that I could ever imagine. You mentioned she was a scholar. She was a scholar in her own right. And she was the teacher for many of the great scholars of, of that yeah. time. And she never complained. Moreover, she was the one who propagated the family relations between Prophet Muhammad and her. From that is all the Muslims across the world pick up the issues of family marriage and how to deal with each other with love and affection is all through Mother Aisha, Aisha radiallahu anha. That's what shows that she was more happier than anyone else in the world. Uh, you gave a good example. You just turn on many of these uh, TV talk shows and many of, you mentioned a young girl, at, and this is not even a marriage. These are just uh, young kids coming exactly. together at 10, 11, having, having um, illicit sex and whatnot. And, and you get sex education at young age for what? So that they can have a safe sex. That's what Islam says, have everything in legal bonding have everything in discipline, not lose, not being uh, used or misused by each other. So marriage only protects the rights. That's why Islam allows marriage at an early age, because that's their freedom. You want to have sex? What happens here? You have, you know, um, uh, people go and have sex by themselves at any age. So Islam says, instead of doing it at any age, um, you better do it in a legal, legal bond. You know, people under 18, how many, of, uh, how many uh, un, up to 18 would not have sex in this community today? Very few. If everyone's having it already, what's the point of stopping them from marrying then? So Islam says, give the rights. So that's another point we covered. I mean, you can go on and expound sure. on this as time is short. But now the thing we want to see, okay, we covered a few points. At the end of the day, how does someone, university student, you can see 
a lot of times the Muslims get emotional. Yes. And they don't end up doing much good so, with their emotions. Yes. They end up doing more That's harm. Right. Yeah. Point number one, Muslims are a very emotional community, as is any other community. I'm coming from Australia. We are too emotional, I tell you what. Uh, I don't have, we don't have time to get into Australian culture, but we'll come back to it sometime. Uh, point number two, as a Muslim, you need to understand you're not just representing yourself. You're representing Islam. You're representing Prophet Muhammad. You're representing the word of Allah that is Al-Quran. So you've got to behave accordingly. At the time of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, they were torturing Bilal radiallahu anhu. What did Prophet Muhammad do? He did not go and emotionally abuse the owner. He did not go and fight back. What did he do? He used the law of the time and he asked Abu Bakr to go and legally free Bilal. So what we should be doing today is, legally in America, I can assure you, the justice system is very correct. In Australia recently, there were three boys who were caught into terrorism, but the judge said, there's no evidence, go back home. Just two days ago. It just shows the justice system, we still have hope in it. So when you have hope in it, you can actually go and complain and get the police do their job. You don't have to jump on them and react emotionally to that. Second way, what do you do is, you give dawah to the people. You inform them about the truth. Point number three, how do you do that? How do you do at times when someone's not ready to listen, right? Allah says in the Quran, when people are arguing for no reason, just say peace and leave, walk away. So the best for you is to do that at such situations. Imam Shafi said, you do, there's no point of arguing with someone who, is, who has lost his mentality, who is who's foolish in his approach and stupid. He said, I have always lost a debate with a foolish one. So you just better give it away at the time, come back another time and give the communication and give the dialogue and do the dialogue. Dial at the end of the video, we'll see right here, we'll go to this clip. Religion! Hey, he just stole our book. This guy just stole our book. Hey, give us our book back now. You just stole. Hey, leave him alone. This guy just stole our book. We see instead of giving the dawah, instead of trying to reasonably have a nice reasonable dialogue with these people, and at the end if it doesn't work, you leave peacefully, they end up uh, taking the, stealing the book. Yep. <laughs> well, sure. Uh, when, when you take away the book, at least pay for it, you know? Yeah, that, that way you just, <laughs> you legally have taken the book away. But anyway, see, I can understand the reason for that. Yeah. And, and obviously, you know, if, if someone's burning the Bible, for example, I can yeah. assure you, some Christians would obviously steal it yeah. and save it. That's see, I believe this one. If you want to take it and kick it on the floor, find out what I'll do it for. What they told me before. Go ahead. Not the following religion. Uh, if someone's burning the American Constitution, uh, someone's going to snatch it and take it away because emotionally they're attached to it. But the best uh, uh, way to do at that time is legally call the police for that and let them deal with it. And you better com communicate with them in a rational manner. If they're not ready to listen, leave at that time because there's no point of discussing with a hateful person at the time. But when he calms down at a later time, you better approach and, and dialogue with them. What would you say in the last few minutes to an individual like this Yep. You know, the leader of this group sure. or any of, what, what would you say to My someone? message to these, you know, people hate, hate, people full of hate, full of hate. I will say to them, I'll say this first to us, to ourselves. As Nelson Mandela said, he said, no one's born with hate. They have been taught to hate, so they can be taught to love. So let's go for that and try to teach them love. What would my response be to people like this who are leading organizations or groups like this who create hate? I go back to them and I say, you are only abusing your own teachings. You're actually becoming a disgrace for your own religion. So if you truly want to have a cause and you want to put your religion forward, follow the religion. And the religion says to love people, love your neighbor. Follow Jesus if you want to propagate Jesus. Otherwise, you're only becoming a disgrace in the name of Jesus. Hope that responds to that. Thank you so much. Beautiful. We're out of time. We look forward you're to having you back again on the Dean Allah Show. Well, yeah, it's an you. opportunity. Beautiful. Thank you. Peace be with you. Salam alaikum. And thank you for tuning in to the Dean Show. Now we know those fanatics, they don't represent the true loving Christian. We know that. Just as those people that the media is expounding like they represent Muslims 24-7 doing some extreme things and pumping you up, they don't represent Islam. So let's us, the rational thinking people, the people with the good hearts, go ahead and create a nice atmosphere that we can go ahead and live in and we can have a nice dialogue that we can go ahead and even if we don't agree, we can agree to differ, disagree in a nice peaceful way and not let People like this dictate to us now what our religion is. So we hope that you got the benefit from this. And for the Muslims out there, don't get provoked. Learn your deen. This deen is a deen of intellect based on proof and evidence. And now you can go ahead and communicate the message in the best, most peaceful way using what the Creator has given you. But if you don't know it and then you just result on emotion, you don't do any good for yourself, for the deen or anybody. Subscribe if you haven't already and come back here to the Dean Show every